God puts us in nations, in places, not by mistake, but to do a job. What if we opened our eyes to the needs of our colleagues, of our leaders, of our subordinates, and we were a priest on their behalf? Welcome to the Repurposing Business Podcast. My name is Brett Johnson. And I'm Len Johnson. And we're going to be talking about how to get our business into God's business. Our subtext is Let My Business Go, and we'll have guests from around the world. So thank you for joining us this week and every week on the Repurposing Business Podcast. Well, welcome to the Repurposing Business Podcast. My name is Brett Johnson. I'm here with Catherine Lund, who's in Johannesburg. Welcome, Catherine. Thanks, Brett. Great to have you with us. And tell us a little bit about your journey, because uh, I'd love to hear a bit about your story, and then we'll chat about your company. So uh, have you always been in Johannesburg? Is that where you grew up? What did you study? Tell us a bit about your life. Um, yes, yeah, so I grew up in Johannesburg. So I am... Um studied after school, I studied to be a neonatal nurse and got into my research industry in the early 90s. Uh, so my, my profession is clinical research professional. Um, yeah, and then I started my, my company from there, from the, from the late 90s. Fantastic. So you've been going uh, over 10 years now. And uh, yeah, effectively. So I mean, I would say the first if you pinpoint the beginning was 99. But I often use 2008 because I changed structures and things like it. But a long time either way. Yeah, a long time either way. Yeah, fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's great. And you got quite a good sized team at the moment. Yeah. So the company's grown to about 50. Yeah. Um, in in the last couple of years. Uh, mm -hmm. So it look we're certainly on a different trajectory than we were a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it'll particularly slow down. Yeah. Fantastic. So tell us what OnQ does. So, so we what we call a contract research organization. So we perform services, effectively professional services. So you perform on behalf of um, pharmaceutical clients. So we don't we don't work typically for the big pharma. We our clients are mid to small to mid sized biotechs, located yeah. around the world. You know, lately everywhere. So so it makes long days. That's mm -hmm. Australia, Singapore, West Coast, Canada. Um, so, you know, it's in, ter in terms of COVID, this has now become a, um, it becomes more, everybody's more, uh, understanding what this is now. So clinical yeah. trial research, everybody's an expert, but, but we, we, we really are <laughs> so, on what drug trials and then things like that are. So we've helped, we help clients understand whether their, their products are safe and, and will work. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we work specifically in, in, in South Africa and, and, and now quite, quite extensively through the continent to do just that. So fantastic. So somebody wants to introduce a new drug, it has to get approval in different yeah. countries, I assume, similar to FDA approval in the US. Yes. And so it's got to go through the decent clinical trials process. You manage that process on behalf of mid-sized pharmaceutical companies around the world. Correct. Yeah. Great. And I presume you have some advantages because you're technically in an emerging market with mm. uh, and South Africa, from what I understand and, and have experienced, has a pretty good medical capabilities, research capability that's been there for decades and decades, in fact, for many, many, many years. And so I presume that gives you some cost benefit advantages over your overseas competitors. So, so I definitely think it's cheaper. We've had a, um, you know, a up and down journey as a country and as a continent to expose ourselves to, to clinical research because the trends change. Um, you know, if you if you want to do work for to get an IND or an FDA registered, you have to go in the US. It's unequivocal. So there always is that. Mm. Um, and then Europe becomes very expensive. Then there was a trend to go to Eastern Europe and in South America that still exists and then the East. Um, however, with I think Africa remains extraordinarily important and, and more and more so as we understand when we do research, we have to be diverse and inclusive um, again for for for. US IND studies, now very much you have to have inclusive populations, which makes sense because genotyping is real, um, African genome is real, and it's now more than a billion people in, 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 the, in the continent which need real help and care and also must have um, must understand what drugs do on our populations. Uh, yeah. In terms of our capabilities, as you correctly said, our, 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 our medical professionals are of a very high standard. And, and you know, I think and we are we are reasonably fast, and it's definitely very, very competitive. 
Mm. Um, and our timelines in the end, sometimes are some of our process is a bit slower. But at the end of the day, we will certainly get the job done a lot quicker than anybody else. Yeah, fantastic, mm. fantastic. Great. And um, with COVID, obviously, South Africa has been in the news quite uh, mm -hmm. a bit. And uh, in some respects, you know, the South Africans feel they've been penalized for having good uh, clinical research. Has that been the case? Or what's your view on that? A hundred percent. So so we work closely with many of the names that are now known throughout the world. Um, and just because of our experience with HIV and that vaccine, we've got incredible virologists and um, laboratory um, abilities, which is which is unusual elsewhere in the world. So we were simply able to detect changes in the variants very much earlier than anybody else. Doesn't mean it started here. Doesn't mean mm -hmm. we found it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, backfired from a PR point of view along the way. So I think they're more circumspect now with what they just, just, just and they are um, discovering. Yeah, I saw quite a prominent Nigerian leader saying he felt that African countries are going to be a little bit leery about revealing their research mm, that they discovered. Because, yeah. So, I mean, also some of the guys that went to the script. I mean, I think one of, one of the, the times it blew up was a, was a very excited research in, in, in a KZN lab. So I, one has to be, this is, I mean, I suppose the pan pandemic's new to everybody, but if you got how do you manage yourself, yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, managing the communications is key. Mm. So with OnQ, Catherine, we had the privilege of meeting you back in 2015, I believe it mm. was, through a mutual friend up in Johannesburg. And then you came down through one of the REAP ventures down in, which was out in Stanford, out at Beloftoboss at the farm, mm. I remember. And I know it was quite a, a crunch for you to get to go back and forth to Joburg a few times. But tell us a bit about your experience on that venture and then afterwards update us so that we can talk about what's happened in OnQ since then. Sure. So um, it was nothing I'd experienced before, and nor did I really understand what it was about. Mm. But I, I honestly remember the time extraordinarily fondly um, in terms of how intensive it was to work work through. Um, you know, Brett, you've got your 10 Ps, and probably recite seven of them, and, and you go through on a very detailed thing what it means for yourself and your and your company in terms of what God God's vision is for for your company. And it was, I mean, honestly, I do think it was revolutionary for myself and my, and my business and I, and I hold that view and I will often still speak about it and I did external different things in terms of church and business and so on where I will bring in many of those principles um, so uh, even I think late last year because my company's grown so quickly and there's a lot of changes I did what I did a storyline and I did my story and I could remember and I found some of my, my notes from those days and along those lines and I included that I'll shoot that across to you if you want, if you're interested to see the presentation. Um, so it, it really did, um, it was it was quite, um, you know, life-changing if, if you want to put it, you know, not to be trite, but it really made a significant difference uh, yeah. in, terms of, in terms of my business and, and, God, and kingdom business principles. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not like you had been clueless about kingdom business principles. You were actually no. kingdom yeah. business group mm. in your church and you'd pull together mm. 20, 30, 40 entrepreneurs, uh, at least in the Joburg area. So this yeah. is something you'd been digging into for a while already. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 100%. Mm. Yeah. And Catherine, it's good to hear that you're a researcher, so you're not faking, faking the data. <laughs> no, I don't fake the data. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. If you were to pick um, some of the key areas that made a difference. So just for those who are listening, you don't understand what a REAP venture is. So we got together mm. for about 10 days. Yeah. Catherine, you had two people who worked with you for those yes. 10 days. And yeah. you spent time going through each of the different areas of your business and just mm -hmm. examining what is, what might be, how the principles might apply. We're not prescriptive. Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and we just say, look, you have your own story. These are the principles. You figure out how you're going to apply them, which is what you mm -hmm. do with the team. Um, were there any particular ones of the 10 Ps that stood out for you uh, as you look back? Um, I think for me, purpose always. Because mm -hmm. although it can doesn't necessarily change, and one always must revisit what it, what it, what it is mm -hmm. in the midst of very sometimes complicated or or, um, a lot of confusing external information or stressful times, one must always go back to what that is. Um, yeah. So that will always remain, and I think it remains true for so many things. Mm -hmm. 
I think partner as well, because my journey with partners has, has remained um, adventurous. And, and I think it is very important that you, 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 you yoke yourself equally with a business partner like one does with a spouse or whatever else. So um, I think those were two, if I think about it, um, that stood out. Yeah. Did you have to revisit existing partnerships or were you able to mm. strengthen mm. those? Did, so yeah, did... I have had um, a fairly dramatic split uh, early this year, mm. which which is a long time coming. But mm. um, they, they, you know, we were uh, fortuitously, fortuitously, I was able to because companies done well. We can go back to profit then if you like, and mm. then we were able to sort of part ways. And I've got some new partners who've joined and, and so on, which which hopefully. Well, then they, they're much younger than me who will then take take this thing forward. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's a very interesting one, the partnering area. Yeah. Because, mm. you know, it's almost like being a parent. You think to yourself, well, you know, if I can make a baby, I'll be a good parent, you know. So yeah. if, we, if we've got two people, maybe we go to the same church, we're of the same faith. Yeah. So broadly, we're in agreement, you think. Mm. And then the rubber hits the road. Mm -hmm. uh, did you find there were differences in your perspectives on the business, on the industry? What was the key thing? Um, so I think work ethic was, was one of them, most certainly. Um, so I think just business acumen, just straightforward mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and unable to pivot change. You know, it's, it's all very well when you're doing ABC, the same thing, and you're getting a relatively same result. But when suddenly DEF arrives and you have to change and, and your partner can't do that, yeah. um, you know, the, 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 the change in terms of, of stress on the one individual doesn't really work. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, so I think those were the main ones. Mm. It's very interesting you mentioned that because I think this is one area that we're quite careful about in our consultations mm. because it's easy to have unequally yoke it as a litmus test it's almost yeah, like yeah. uh um, i want to say the abortion test pro or anti for a politician you know i'm on this sure. side or on that side and so mm -hmm. uh and yet there's opportunities you can have uh, a mismatch on competencies as you pointed out you can have a mismatch on uh it's not that somebody isn't a christian it, it's it's yeah. other factors as well yeah. and that mm -hmm. can lead to an unequally yoked situation mm -hmm. But quite a few people have to rethink partnerships. Also, we've seen some partnerships that have been sorted out and have come together in a yeah. good way, which is yeah. great. Yeah, mm. fantastic. Yeah. So tell us about your journey since 2015. What's happened? You, it sounds like you've grown tremendously. Is that a result mm. of the pandemic or, or give us a, a, a sense? As to so what? it was It was more than that. So, um, yeah, so I think it was late. 2017, I had an existing client, long-standing client who we work with here locally. They are effectively a multinational, though a South African company. And um, they managed, they, 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 my client, the individual with whom I work closely and had a pretty good personal relationship with. She actually, I was getting frustrated um, in terms of what I'm talking about, the, the, the partnership and, and equally yoking things. And I was trying to think, okay, what next? Because entrepreneurs can become e easily bored. So even now, as I sit here, what I, what I set out to do is far exceeded and you kind of constantly have to reset what's the next thing and, and you may not do that and instead of just, oh, look, something else, you know, there's a butterfly. Um, so, so she phoned me the one time late, late December and she said to me, what is my plan with Onky? And Onky had also been approached to be bored a couple of times and I've been thinking about that and why. So I said, it's interesting you say that because it, it, something needs to change. So she said, well, why don't you come and I need somebody to come help me run. They were running global studies at the time. So we worked out, long story short, we worked out an arrangement where I could go. Um, I worked with her almost 80% sort of, of my time. I still, I still held shares in on I still was a director. And to be honest, I don't think anybody really knew I'd gone because I still continued to do what I needed to do in between. And I was effectively had a sponsor hat on, like my client hat on, running global studies. And it was very, very tough because the client is extremely tough, which I knew that already. And, the environment, and that's because the culture of that company was tough. So very stressful. But what I learned was like a mini MBA. Mm -hmm. And I learned so many things. And the main thing I learned was, because um, now I'm evaluating similar companies like myself. I went to audit in the US. I went to, I was helping with costume proposals. And I learned confidence into what my own queue was and can be. So I learned things we need to grow and things will be good at. And when you're running your own company, you very really are unable to externally step out and say, 
this is what it looks like. Where's our position in the company? How we manage ourselves costings proposal-wise? What's our reputation like? What do we need to fix? And I was offered that opportunity, which I think was extraordinary. Yeah. So when I came back, which was the beginning of 2020, I knew what I needed to do and I came back with fresh energy and I sort of, and then COVID came. And, and so I just remember sitting on my bed through the lockdown and just blowing through, through work and mails and a whole lot of stuff left, which they needed to, because mm. <laughs> I learned things when I was away and I could sit and figure out what, what, was, what was wrong and what was not. Um, so I could then reset a new team and with, with new clients and with new work. Um, so, so it was, I think, a combination of, of both those things. But I think as, um, I think you, you said something similar along all the years. So people said, well, it was COVID and you, it, you wouldn't have grown without it. Yes and no. If you, if, you didn't, if you don't exist as a company, if you don't stand, the next day you stand, the next day you stand, doesn't matter what happens. You couldn't receive all the work or whatever's coming your way. You need to be a functioning organism, right, to grow. So, you know, whether you were 20 and you're not two people, it doesn't matter. You, you just still exist and stand. Uh, to to you know you survive mm. yeah so it's very interesting i like this notion of getting an outside perspective on your business mm. and um it reminds me a little bit of those tv shows where you're the mystery boss you know the scene mm, mm, exactly boss. exactly yeah you get to see what people are dealing with in the front mm. line on your business and I think it's a, it's a good thing because we can drink our own Kool-Aid and we can think mm -hmm. we're fantastic. Yeah. And when you get an outside perspective, what do other people see, think of you? How do they see you? Yeah. And it ties in with the biblical principle of having a mm -hmm. point of reference outside of the company. The ultimate point of reference is what is it that honors God, that gives glory to God? Yeah. But having the privilege of seeing that from the outside is quite amazing. Mm. Yeah. Perhaps in the future, as part of your research, you can hire yourself out as the mystery CEO. You, know? you can. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I'm tough enough to, you know, <laughs> brave enough. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah, fantastic. So that's quite an experience that you were mm. able to. So it sounds like it hasn't been what we've gone from 10 people to 20 people to 30 to 50. Was there a bit of a dip as you did a realigning within the company? Yeah, so, so I think... I don't remember numbers particularly, but yes, it was a big shakeup in 2020, most certainly, mm. um, in, in terms of start. And then we had to, to, to reset. And what I also, with the energy I got back as well, OnQ was typically known always as a training company. And then also just before um, and, and during when I, when I left to, to consult externally, the, the, you know, the, the, the younger guys, they come and they go. And, and there was like three or four resignations. And I just, just said, okay, from now on, we're not hiring anybody under 35. Yeah. So it was just an in, internal policy for a while, which actually worked. Um, but then I actually got my energy back to 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 retrain. Mm. Um, so we got we got new guys in, and, and yeah, and then the trajectory from twenty twenty up has been it, it's been high. But it, as I said, not only COVID work, this was also existing clients, existing work, and then other new work um, mm. coming from COVID. Where people came here to have a look at COVID, didn't actually do COVID, but realized we could do different other things as well. So you've had a chance, Catherine, to rebuild your team, in essence. Mm. Did mm. you revisit your values? Did you revisit your foundational principles about what you felt about the business? And then how do you inculcate those with your new people? Yeah. So we haven't, we haven't done that yet. So yes. I've got a whole lot of new directors and things, which is still very fresh. The, the last one joins us properly from tomorrow, although mm. she's well known to us. And what I actually even read is even recently, the last couple of days, that I need to revisit that we actually were going away in two weeks' time. I had the the um, blessing of being able to buy a, cape, a house in the Eastern Cape mm. last year. So we go down there quite a lot. And we're all going to go down just to chit-chat. The, the, the new three directors and myself, we're all women. I won't comment. I'll just leave that there. <laughs> and just to, I've got to remember what is important, what stands out for our company and what, what are non-negotiables, right? So, so, and... So I will, I will indeed revisit that, and we will probably have to do something in the next coming months to, to roll it out to our team so they, they internalize what is important in this company, um, what we expect from them. And if, if it's not what they're looking for, then, then they can go and look elsewhere. Yeah. I remember Lynn and I went through an exercise that was in about 2000 or so, so a long time ago, where we'd yeah, hired yeah. a bunch of people. They were all people of faith, all Christians, all uh, solid people. But I came to realize that we had a different perception of mm. 
how a business should run. And mm -hmm. I said to Lynn in April, you know, I don't want to find I've created a company where I don't want to go to work. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and mm -hmm. so we sat down and documented our foundational mm -hmm. principles. It took us about three months and then sat down with our people one by one by one. And it's a bit of a realignment exercise. A whole bunch of them left. It's the same sort of thing that you've been yeah. through. So I think it's um, because, you know, we now, we now not small, right? So we need to, we need to be more system oriented, more process oriented. That's not my natural anything. Mm. Um, so, so some of my new directors are that, and I recognize we have to have it. But there is a limit because there's certain things that I never feel, just because my, my, my worst thing is, one of my worst things is do not reinvent the wheel. I'm like, why? I mean, the wheel's fine. But I mean, there's always a different way of doing things and, you know, we're not here to be cookie cutters, right? We, yeah. we create beings. We've, uh, you know, to to solve a problem out the box is one of my most favorite things to do, and which keeps me energized. So we must never never lose those kinds of. We we have the flexibility. Everybody has the flexibility in my company to solve a problem. Use your brain. Use your particular um, strengths to do that. Yeah. So I'm not saying we engage on losing that, but these are the things that are key to me, and also people. I was actually, funny enough, on a management call this morning, we were talking about staff again because we constantly need new staff and there's CVs coming up and there's like this one yeah. ABC rock star and we've been hiring a couple of rock stars and they're not working out. And, and then internally, we look at these people who very, perhaps don't have experience, but there's certain things that they have and they are, and you know, they are, um, they, they will never stop working until the job's done. One of them I've just learned is that she, she was in leave and she was she wanted to progress in our company. She was learning our SAPs on her own time. She did an extra course. I didn't even know that. So those are the individuals that, in my opinion, are 70%, 80% there. Yeah. Because you, the, the characters there. Yeah. You can teach anybody anything, but you you know, you can't teach them work ethic. You can't teach them these things. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I find that work is under attack, this notion of doing good work. And you mm -hmm. mentioned work ethic earlier. And um, I saw a T-shirt on a young guy. Not that long ago, um, don't do unskilled labor, don't do skilled labor. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Um, yeah, I'm not a laborer, I'm not here to work. You know, I'm, yeah, I'm here yeah. for something more important, but just the importance mm. of work is such a big deal. Mm. And uh, yeah, so very interesting. So, Catherine, tell me about some of the, the healthcare problems that. Uh, that you're working on or problems you would like to see solved? What are some of, because you're an entrepreneur, you're thinking about what's out there and you love to solve problems. Are there particular things and how are you engaging with God in solving those problems? That's a pretty broad question. Yeah, so, I mean, if we look at our country, I mean, HIV remains a problem, um, TB remains a problem. So if, if we can look at different ways of, of doing that, um, you know, the technology is so advanced now, which can also help our, our communities in terms of communication, healthcare, um, so, so, you know, education. Um, we still have such little access to even sometimes very basic primary, primary health mm -hmm. in, this, in this country, which, which, which cert certain research can do, and again, through, through devices. So that is, we, we are, there's more, more interesting things coming along along those lines. So, mm. Mm. I've seen recently uh, both in the US, but also when I was there in South Africa, some old diseases popping up of late, you know, kids mm. being sent home from school with hepatitis, with this, mm. with that. And this seems to be uh, almost in the post pandemic a revival of some of the mm. things that we thought had been addressed. Have you been seeing that? Yeah, so we actually got an inquiry last week about measles to, mm. to have a look around. And um, they quoted me some countries like DRC or Quatova or Ethiopia to look at and, and found them in Zimbabwe. So, uh, so there the definitely is because it's people just stayed away and they weren't doing their natural vaccine, their, their, their routine, which okay. just shows, it just show and polio, right? I'm sure you've seen mm. that polio is even here and there is, is, is sort of re-emerged. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But, but of, of interest in the pandemic was very much, um, uh, repurposing old drugs, and I think you've mentioned this, and indeed our, our mutual friend has a, as well said that. And it's and it's and it's valid, right? Um, to to you know, we look at it. The research maybe done 20, 30 years ago was perhaps needed some some refreshing, but we can look at new indications with drugs that exist already. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you've got endless opportunities in your business, it sounds mm. like, and mm. uh, which is fantastic. Gatsman, what do you think would be your, your big challenges as you see your outlook over the next five years or so in South Africa? Um, in terms of my business specifically? or Yeah, in terms of your business in the healthcare space. Now, you're serving global clients, so yeah. to South Africa or Africa. Yeah. What do you see the big challenges? I think um, the big challenge is that we our future is in our hands because we have everything offered to us. We in terms of my own business, I don't even think we have a, a proper competitor mm. uh, for a variety of reasons. So mm. we have every opportunity to be as um, as influential as we want to, which is a little bit scary, uh, to be honest. Mm. Um, so, so um, yeah, challenges wise, I think regulators are, are working with us. You know, we've obviously still got our infrastructure issues. Um, but I think it's to keep a handle on growth and where do you stop growing? Do you ever said that you know we we are now looking at global expansion we've just employed our first uh, permanent employee in kenya um a lot of our clients say well they like what you do you can replicate our work anywhere in the world why don't you go ahead and do that yeah um yeah so along those lines so it sounds like the challenge might be it's good that you're an entrepreneur because you keep thinking of expansion but otherwise yeah. the challenge would be to think of just getting to what's a manageable number is it yeah. 175 yeah saying mm. What's the full opportunity? Yet? And it mm. reminds me that God is an expansionist, mm. <laughs> you know, and uh, one of the things we've seen over the last 20 years or so is that there are opportunities to take good businesses in South Africa, Africa, and take them overseas. Sure. And yeah. uh, so it's good that you're well positioned in that regard. Mm. So, so the other things that, sorry, Beth. Now go ahead. So the other thing that's of interest to me, like I mentioned earlier, is training. So we've actually starting an academy. Mm. So you can, I think it's registered South African Pharmaceutical Health Academy, which is funded by OnQ because we, we happen to have, um, so we have a lot of miracles in the last two years. One is that a lot of cash basically for some businesses for doing nothing. We managed to employ 90 nurses and train and upskill them and that remains. Projects come to an end now, but um, we still have money to work with. And we funded the academy out of that for two years, fully, wow. uh, fully staffed. It's an MPO, and we will train through that. So that will be a, a vision of ours to, to make sure that we're able to train. <coughs> it's, it's, a, it's a modular program we're going to eventually link up with university. Um, so, so you yeah. set up a nonprofit mm. out of OnQ, and it's mm. training nurses, training medical staff. What, what's your primary? So, so, so anybody, so there would be criteria is it must somebody must have a life science background of okay. some sort. So either a BSc or a nursing pharmacy. You must be um, you must be unemployed and you must be under twenty five. So the idea is to in our industry, as soon as you've got your step in the door, you're fine. But that step in the door remains even still within our industry as um, you know to privilege to, to some extent and networked. And we're trying to we're trying to break that. Yeah, mm. you must have thought through the shortage of nurses in the world. Have you thought about training and exporting nurses? Uh, I don't know. They're better than to be one step too far. Um, so, I mean, we found the opposite, to be honest. When I was looking for nurses for our, our vaccine support programs, there were a lot of them unemployed. I don't know we, we, if it is a mismatch there. Mm. Mm. Yeah, certainly mm. that is the case. We've, we've seen that. And I think in the US, the medical professionals, a lot of them are under pressure and mm. yeah, it's been a torrid time for them. Yeah, sure. And, uh, yeah, I think that there's a projected a shortage, a shortfall of healthcare okay. workers. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that with medical tourism, that certainly people do travel to South Africa and to India and other locations yes. Yes. to get the, mm. the healthcare mm. done. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, Catherine, in terms of the um, some of the key principles that you feel are critical to you, that you've said, okay, these are key as an entrepreneur building a business, these two or three things are the things that I focus on. What mm. would those be? So the first is that um, often I just, you know, when you get overwhelmed with problems and things like it, it's like nobody died. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, for us, it's, it's a paper exercise. It's, a, it's a, you know, just to take a step back because the pressure is high in terms of this particular, this particular work. And the second is that you can solve most problems. Mm. If you're given enough time, if you consult enough, 
there is a different way to solving something that's creative. Um, and the third is that is, is that you're not in control, right? God, God has given this to us, and ultimately it's for Him to solve it. You can help, but it is a, it just takes away a lot of the stress, and we just take a step back and say, okay, you know what? This, this I don't have anymore. Mm. And so, so along those lines, I mean, it sounds mm. um, simple, but those those are my viewpoints. Sounds like that's helped you manage stress in a big way. Mm, it has, yeah. Yeah. And you stressed by the growth or are you excited by the growth? Um, I, I don't love it, Brett, I must admit, because again, it's it's far exceeded what I ever wanted to do. Mm. Um, so I've got to find a way to keep myself engaged for the next 10 years, even if that's the journey. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's such to go. I mean, my next goal is really, and I've even reached out to, to fellow entrepreneurs to do this, is to sort of, because, you know, I've, I've, I've got a little bit of money now, is to go and invest in other small businesses and partner with them to grow it. Um, I don't know if I will or won't, but, uh, mm. but uh, you know, I mean, my 50s now is and some time left still. I, 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 I don't know if I, if I should move on from this, but it, but it must remain. That's, that's my key thing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like with your new directors, you'll mm. have some people who like keeping things going that are going. Um, 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 I do think so. Yeah. And you'll be able to open up some. Which new... I, couldn't, I couldn't see last year, even. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. It's important to have a team like that and, yeah. and good to go through those things. And at the same time, to keep yourself challenged, mm. whether it's opening up new avenues for OnQ or opening up other businesses in your portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. And a uh, curveball question. You and Chris, your husband, he's a highly capable guy and he's mm. worked a lot in the nonprofit space and so forth. And yeah. uh, as your kids are flying the coop and graduating and getting married and doing all of these things. Um, are the two of you thinking about new possibilities of things you can do together? Uh, look, Christopher really is, is involved in my business. He's sort of the financial manager. So, I mean, I think that's enough, really. It's more than enough. Uh, <laughs> um, but, but Christopher, he's, you know, he's extended his space with homelessness in the church, in, 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 the, in the city, Mm. And he's really done great things. I mean, he's even the last couple of years, he's he's you know, his faithfulness in that space is mm. is not in dispute. He's head of the Chaz Big Homelessness Network. Um, he's frequently got some media coverage. We had the opportunity to talk to somebody about U Turn. I don't know if you know if you know the project. And then U Turn, yes, yeah. Mm. So that's been something we've been looking for in Johannesburg for a while. And we happened they, the, the guys came up and connected us with a, the church, is not which is not our church. Mm. Um, and that would be exciting for, I think, both of us in, in the future because that's very much close to our heart. So something along those kind of lines. Yes, yes. We have some of our people down in Cape Town involved with u Yeah. Mm. yeah fantastic. Mm. Wonderful for job creation and other things. Yes. So if we could, if you could jump into the homeless and then I could jump into <coughs> some of the entrepreneurship opportunities, that, that might be fun. Yeah, fantastic. Mm. Great. Well, Catherine, any closing remarks from your side in terms of advice you would give people? You went through the repurposing business consultation in 2015. We're now yeah. seven years on almost. Mm. Um, how long did it take you? Was it a quick process to implement the principles? Was it a, a drawn out thing? Any pieces of advice you would give people? I don't think it's a quick thing. I think it's to embrace what it's about mm. and to let it settle with you because it's not all of it at once, right? Because it's a lot. So I think it's to settle as a time goes by. Some things are more important at the time to the other. But yeah. I, I think it, it's, it's worth revisiting it quite frequently because it is, it is immensely powerful. Mm -hmm. And sounds like you're entering a phase with your new directors where the processes, the planning, the things, some of the things, the order structure things that yeah. might be boring to you as an entrepreneur, uh, that you're having a chance to, to embed those uh, for yes. a long time. Long-term growth. No, that's that's true. We even have something called a systems operations director. We we made that up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, I think of Colossians two verse five that says, "I delight to see how orderly you are and how firm your faith is," and I want to commend you for for making the adjustments in the business and being willing to embrace growth because uh, sometimes it's easier just to keep things manageable. You know, you can feed your family, you can be comfortable. Yeah. Mm. And uh, embracing growth can be a scary thing, but God's given you a product or service uh, that can serve people in many countries, mm. uh, which in his heart is always for the nation. So hats off to you, Catherine, for the work that, 
that you've done in that regard. Thanks, Brett. Lovely to chat to you. And thank you as well for everything that you've done.